recording. I forgot. So thank God I remembered. My team would have been mad. Okay. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I want to totally get started. Um, I want to value your time as uh, we all, Tanya is a master of time management. Like she has taught me so much about setting timers on my phone and just making sure I get with the program and make it happen. And so I want to make sure that we respect your time. Um, let me get my light on so I don't look like I am dying over here. <laughs> When it comes to this, let me see. Why is that like that? Okay. Okay, let me see if that's a little better. I don't know if it's better. Let's see. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Is that better light? I think that's a little better. Okay. So you are hopping on this call because you're either part of Tanya's team, um, you might be part of Taryn's team, you're part of my team. So um, if you if you haven't, I will go ahead and mute everyone because I don't want to have any feedback because I got a lot of good um, information for you guys. And so, um, no worries if you haven't muted yourself. I will mute you. <laughs> Let's see here um, if I can figure out <laughs> where the heck. Usually it's oh mute all. Okay, and then Tanya, you can just unmute yourself and you're ready. Okay. Okay, so please, 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 as I'm talking, type into the comments, and then I can answer questions. And then if you need to raise your hand, you can like click, click, you can click, 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 like raise your hand. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna get right into this. Um, hopefully, our call uh, we're gonna do it under an hour. This can be talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I just wanted to give you the most pertinent information. Um, let me be honest with you. Um, I I know people that have paid. $1,500 to give the information I'm giving to you right now because I got this information from someone that I paid a large amount of money to work with. Okay. So I decided that like, instead of having us all invest in our business, which I think is great, why not talk to you about this and give you what's working for me? Okay. Um, so let's talk about what branding is. I know you hear that word. I know you hear it all the time, but let's talk about why it's important and what it is. Okay. So let me make sure that that stays there. Perfect. Okay. So why is branding important? So branding is important because it's the first thing that people notice about you. Okay. It's what people say when you are not around. All right. You need to remember that. Okay. It's what people say when you are not around. It's a promise that you make to customers, to coaches, to your followers about who you are. So they know who you are and you're not going to change when they show up. You're not going to be saying one day that your story you started and you love Shakeology and the next day you're talking about how you never really liked Shakeology in the first place. <laughs> okay. It's a feeling. Okay. Branding is a feeling of, of I don't even know if the word comf comfortability that you give people. All right. It's a culture that you create on your page. It's your culture that you create in your life. And it's something that you are giving to someone as they come to your page. All right. Basically, if I were to ask you, this is what you want. I want you to think about if someone were to refer you, what would they say about you? Okay. People that refer me, I know say five things because I get the same responses every single time. I want to work with you because you're fun. I want to work with you because you have a progress versus perfection mentality. I want to work with you because you have crazy kids. I tell crazy stories about my kids. I have three of them all the time. What would they say about you? Okay. There's lots of things they say about me, but what would they say about you? That is your brand right now that you have. Um, if they're saying nothing about you, you don't have a brand. You're just a beach body coach. Okay. Um, and that is that that's, what's going to stop tonight. The reason that you may have been struggling in your business is because you're branding beach body. You're not branding yourself. All right. So you have to figure out why is it important about branding? Because you have to figure out how customers perceive you so you can brand yourself in a way that is attracting the right people, attracting people like you, attracting people who you want to be on your team, attracting other fill in the blank, whatever it is. Okay. So there's two types of, uh, of branding. There is the business part of the branding and the visual. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to, I'm going to spend 80% of my time on, on business branding and then talk just very briefly about visuals because visuals are usually something, I'll just go into that in a little bit, but business and visual. So let's talk about business. Business is basically who 
you are, who is your target audience? We're going to talk a lot about your target audience. Okay. Um, and I know you hear this word a lot and I know you can probably Google it and it's like, okay, it's the people that you're supposed to reach. It's your target. So these, your, my definition for target audience for the sake of this call is how do people look like who you are? Like how do people, how are people looking at you? Okay. Who are you really? Um, are there people that are looking at you that have dealt with similar experiences? Okay. This process of defining your target audience, write this down is becoming comfortable with every part of who you are. Okay. Your target audience is, be is once you find your target audience, you are comfortable with every part of who you are. Okay. I can fully and totally a hundred percent with authenticity tell you I am comfortable with who I am. People know I don't wear makeup most of the time. People know I'm not a girly girl. People know I cuss a little bit, but I love Jesus. People know I don't like coffee. People know that um, I love Sour Patch Kids and Oreo cookies. People know I love, I run a business. People know I have three kids because they tell me all the time that they know this because I constantly brand myself all the time, okay? So here's what you're gonna do from now on. I'm gonna help you brand yourself right now. And I just did this activity um, and I just was doing it and it was like, freaking mind-blowing when I did it two weeks ago and it still blows my mind okay so I'm gonna I want you to come up with seven things okay we're all coming up with seven things tonight all right um, and these are the things that make you who you are so I'm gonna talk it out right now and as I'm saying things they might hit some perfect like some ideas um, you might know right away I'll tell you right now that if you're a mom that's probably one of your things okay mine is a mom, mom life and crazy life. Like that's just goes in one because I'm telling crazy stories about my kids all the time. Okay. So seven things. Okay. I want you to start thinking about like what your kids do. If you don't, and if you don't have kids, I have something for you too. Okay. But what your kids do. All right. Like are they in, what sports are they in? Are you a soccer mom? Are you a gym mom? Are you a dance mom? Are you a football mom? Are you a baseball mom? Like what are your sports are your kids doing? That's probably what type of mom you are. And you need to write that down. Okay. If you don't have kids and you have animals, um, that would be something like you're a dog mom or it's that certain type of dog, those type of things, or whatever it is personally, that would be something that you want to think about when it comes to that aspect. Okay. Here. Okay. So I want you to start thinking, I'm going to ask you some questions to walk you through this. Where do you frequent like week on a weekly basis? Where are you going to? I am a target mom, a hundred percent office, like hundred percent. People know that I, that I go to Target, that I talk about Target all the time, and my jokes are about Target. I make jokes every week about Target. I ran into, Jess, there you are. I was just going to say, I ran into another like Beach Buddy coach, Jess there, and she's like, oh, funny, I'd see you here. I'm like, well, not really. We always talk about Target. Like, and everyone, like, and now here's the thing, is I know I branded myself so well about being a Target mom that people share Target quotes with me on my page. They're like, Kiana, like this, this is cute. They tag me in target videos. They tag me in target shirts. They tag me. Okay. So I frequently like, like the target being a target mom is part of my brand. That is who I am. Okay. Are you an adrenaline junkie? Do you like hiking? Do you like biking? Do you like zip lining? Like, I want you to think about where you live. All right. Are you living in a city? Are you a farmer? Are you a farm life? Are you a city life? Are you suburbia or like whatever that is? Okay. Um, I'm going to throw out there, uh, Sabrina. She's one of my coaches that's on here. She performs like sensual songs. That sounds weird. She's okay. But she sings and she's like this, she's like this person by day and this like sensual <laughs> sex goddess at night. And I'm like, oh my God, like that is like, it like blows my mind that she does this and she travels across the country. Like that is a big part of her brand. That is like, this, that is part of it, okay? Um, are you a wife? Now, are you a wife? Are you married? Are you getting, are you getting married? Um, you know, is talking about being in a relationship important to you? Is talking about, you know, being married for like a high school sweetheart or being married for five years? Or is that a big part of what you want your brand to be about, okay? Um, are you, an like most of you are entrepreneurs, Okay. So I think that you're missing the boat. If you're not talking about being an entrepreneur, I'm not saying that needs to be one of your seven things, but mine is an entrepreneur, um, slash stay at home mom. Um, and I'll explain to you what I'm, we're going to do with this. Uh, another thing about myself is I, what are some things that you like to do? Are you a gardener? 
Um, what puts like what? If, I understand that you're a beach body coach, but that's like one slice of your pie. If you are branding your whole entire life about fitness and being a lifestyle coach, okay, that's one slice of your pie. All right. I'm a mom. I'm a fitness coach. I'm a lifestyle coach. I like to consider myself a lifestyle coach. So I would say fitness and lifestyle goes in the same category. Okay. Um, and even my, my nutrition videos all go in the same category. Okay. That's, that's to me is all the same category. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a soccer mom. All right. Um, I am an entrepreneur and a stay at home mom. I'm fun and I really like to dance. Uh, I do. I talk about that all the time. I dance in all my videos. I danced making lunch videos the like one time, <laughs> like and that was my most viewed video in a long time. Like making lunch videos and like lunch videos, lunches in the morning because it was boring. Um, and then just um, what else can I ask? Let me see here. Um, are, is there something about your life that you do? Think about the things that you do every day. So like, look at. I want you to think in your head just for like thirty seconds. What are you doing every week on a regular basis? On Monday nights, on Tuesday, on Wednesday? Are you doing something? Are you part of a Bible study? Okay. Are you a faith-based person? Are you running your own corporation on the side? Are you like a, are you like a, you know, this, this, this person? I mean, Pamela, I was just talking to Pamela Higgins. She's one of my coaches. And I'm like, I, I go to your page, Pamela. And I would never know that you write blogs. Like you're a nutrition, like a nutrition person that writes blogs for a, like a really reputable like company. Like, I wouldn't know that. Like, why are you talking about that? And she's like, I don't know. Why am I not talking? <laughs> like, like, these are the things that like things that are like, you might think are just mundane are what make you, you. Okay. So I want you to come up with your seven things. Do we have our seven things? Okay. If you don't have your seven things, I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a second, but you're, you're going to have your seven things. Give yourself some seven things. I will tell you right now, every one of you is either a mom or a dad or, uh, or maybe not your mom or dad or you're like a fitness lifestyle coach. That's at least one, okay? Um, every one of you are an entrepreneur or your own CEO. That could be two. And then the other four or five, I want you to come up with on your own. Okay, now you're going to do this, and I'm gonna break it down. Okay, so you can't see that, but you're gonna, so this is what you're gonna do. I'm gonna explain it to you, then I'm gonna show you a, a visual, okay? You're going to attach your topics to different days of the week. So, you're going to write Monday, Monday, and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then Tuesday, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you have Monday through Sunday with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is what it looks like. Okay. Let me see if I can share my screen. If it hopefully it pops up. Um let me make sure it's it's up already. I thought I had it up. Maybe I didn't have it up. Um, okay, uh, I'll work on it right now. You keep doing that. Write that out. You write that out right now, and I'll get this up for you. Oh, here it is. Okay, let me see if I can... Oh, it's because Zoom is in my Internet Explorer. Well, that's, let me see if this will work. See if I can click off of it. Oh, yay. Do you see this? Do you see it? <laughs> okay. So it's going to look like this. You're going to, this is my Google document. And here's the thing, is I am working on this right now. Um, I have not spent my seven hours. It's going to take you about a total of seven hours to do this, but you will have content for the next 10 weeks. Okay. So what you're going to do is this is you are going to attach your tips, your, your topics for each Monday. You can pick whatever day. Okay. Here is my tips for that. And, and then I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, Sundays, typically you want to have a heartfelt topic, uh, talking about your struggles, talking about, um, and Tanya will go into that a little bit more detail because a lot of people on Sunday nights are like, oh, I have to go back to work. I have to go back to like, I have to finish, start, do my job again. Or I have to like, they start thinking about the week again. And so you want to usually, a lot of people are online scrolling on the couch on Sunday evenings. Okay. So that's a high visibility. All right. If you do run a like page or a business page, you have business analytics. You can look at when are your most popular days? 
that's when you put your most heartfelt post. Okay. When are your, mo what days are you getting uh, demographics for like, more moms on because I, I have that you can look at that in your back you can kind of click through that's when you would do like target mom or like whatever okay so here's what you're gonna do you're gonna whatever tip it is that you have your so my tip what I realized is is as that's not a good example let me do I'm um, entrepreneur stay-at-home mom okay so that's my my one of my things is entrepreneur and stay-at-home mom you're gonna take that tip and say you're gonna go into Pinterest and you're gonna type tip for being an entrepreneur or stay at home mom. Okay. And you're going to do that on Pinterest and all of these blogs and all of these links and all of this stuff is going to pop up. Okay. And all you are going to do is you're creating content for your next 10 weeks. Each one of these numbers is on Wednesday. I'm going to make sure I post about this. So you are creating a consistent brand across the board doing this. So what I noticed as I was doing this is it's not, I want you to, you're going to, you're going to read a tip. You're going to, so for example, I'm doing stuff that I relate to. So I read, I clicked on the blogs. I looked, they might've given me seven tips, but maybe I only related to two of that particular tip. So I wrote it down. Does that make sense? And then I went to another blog. And so this took me, I just did this. I just timed this. I did three main days and it took me a little over an hour. Okay. So I did it a little bit faster. So here are my tips that, that I'm going to talk about. And the cool thing about this is when I look at this, I immediately can start to see a picture in my head of what else I'm going to say. I'm going to post a picture of myself with an alarm clock. I'm going to post, like, I can see my story, like, becoming into fruit tradition. This is not just, like, words on a piece of paper. This is, like, like me easily being able to share and brand myself. So having a morning routine and things that I believe in that are important. Setting an alarm across the room so you can't hit snooze. I just started that, you guys, and I've talked to my, I've talked to my, on my business page about that having a clear vision and make sure you know where you're going. Keep a happy folder of emails and messages from coaches and customers that send you thank you or heartfelt messages. Um, those are on your tough days. So I'm going to talk about being an entrepreneur that you have ups and downs, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, getting dressed and shower and putting on your makeup if it and be more presentable more often than not. And you can not understand, underestimate the strong correlation of how you look, how you feel and what you do. Okay. This is not how my post is going to like sound. Does that make sense? I'm going to put it in my words. I, and then here's the main thing. Each one of these tips, okay, you have to attach it to a story in your life. Does that make sense? A simple story can be a sentence, okay? I could say simply this. I have a new morning routine, you guys, and it's so really, it's awesome. I've been reading on tips about entrepreneurs or I've been, re I'm an entrepreneur or I run my own business at home and I read, I have a really hard time waking up. And this is the truth. I, the average person pushes their alarm five times. Okay. Only, only 83% of Americans push their alarm five times. I just read that. I was like, what? That's me. Okay. So I decided to test it out today. I set my alarm across the room. Boom. I not only got up, I got up within five minutes of my alarm. It went off for five minutes. Okay. I know some of you have been like, but well, whatever. Five minutes it went off and I was like up and I, I was up a whole hour before normal. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I was so pissed that the alarm was going off. Like I had to get up. You know what I mean? And then I was like, oh my gosh, I had enough time to get my workout in, obviously to pack the kids lunch, to sit down with them at lunch and breakfast and talk with them to do my three things that I do in the morning every single day. I was feeling really good. Okay. So that's something that I can talk about, right? That's something that that's a tip that I can talk about. Um, so create a dedicated workspace, schedule work time. These are some tips that I've learned over my, like, these are some tips that were coming up on the blogs. I weren't just, I, I'm not just coming up with these ideas. These were all ideas that were coming up on Pinterest. Does that make sense? And so for the next 10 Mondays on, on a Wednesday, I will post about this. So on Wednesday, I will post about being an entrepreneur and stay at home mom. Okay. Is that the only thing I'm going to post? No, I'm probably going to post, I might post something else from my topic. Like I'm probably going to post about something with fitness. I always post a workout video or I might post something with my food, but in general, I'm being consistent with showing up as showing them that I'm an entrepreneur. Does that make sense? Okay. So then the next thing I'm, so one of the other topics I chose is self-love and personal development and growth. It's really important to me. I practice self-love every single day. I try to teach my team that I talk about it all the time on my page. So these are some things that I want to do. Take a selfie and be proud of it with your kids. So I'm going to take a picture with my kids and tell them that what the, what the, what, how we felt when we did it, looking in the mirror with your child and saying, I love you to your own reflection, focusing on habits and behaviors instead of physical traits. These are all 
topics that now are becoming posts because I already have ideas that are flowing through my head. Okay, so the main thing is, is please, please, please do not use a stock photo with these. You want to use a photo that you create that is put a face on it, okay? There's like, like a simple picture of you smiling like in your workout clothes or like whatever. And then I could post a quote that says, you can't hate yourself happy. You can't criticize yourself then. You can't shame yourself worthy. Change begins with self-love and care like that. Or I could post a like, and then like, that's just a quote. Or I could post a picture of myself smiling, looking at the mirror and saying, I really thought about this quote today when I was looking in the mirror and it really made me think, okay? No matter how many times you can't, you know, you can't force yourself to change on the inside. It, it, it starts with habits, you know, and self-love. And this is the thing that I'm working on all the time. Um, so these are the tips. These are the things, as you can see, I'm still working on them. So on Thursdays, I'm going to be talking heavily about self-love, um, on Friday. So on Fridays, you typically want to do something fun and light. Um, you know, they're getting off of work and they just want to get home and they want to like laugh. I don't know. I'm not saying you have to be, have something that's funny, but like something that you want to, your aim is to get something shared. Okay. All with the, these posts are to get something shared, but especially on Fridays to get something shared. So people are coming to your page. These are just ideas that, um, that I had. Now here's the thing. I didn't go to Pinterest and put like fun and like to dance. <laughs> like, okay. I just, I just put in Pinterest how to have more fun with your kids. Okay. And then I put in a Pinterest like, um, ways to include dancing into your life. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm like combining the two. So I'm not necessarily, and you're going to see that some things don't come up, but as if you have this, why, what I want you to make sure that you do, you don't have to do, it doesn't have to be on Google documents, but as you're going through this, like have your, your, your topics out because you're going to like try to find something, for example, for being a busy mom of busy kids and just like trying to find organization. And then you're going to be like, Oh, that's a good one for self love. Like they kind of correlate and cross and you can kind of like add things that as you're, so you're not just going to be working on one topic. Does that make sense? Of course, some things come up like target mom. Like I don't necessarily know if I need to even write things out, except that funny things that I'm going to think about. Like, so my goal here is just to have funny thing, like funny things that I do at Target. Okay, that's I haven't thought about it yet, but just like my funny things that happen at Target, or all people that only get that shop at Target. Okay, like if they see a bunch of people walking you with red shirts, you get really happy. <laughs> okay, or you know, like you know, the dollar bins at Target. You know, you go and try to get two things, and you come out with thirty-two things. Those type of things. Um, so my other things are soccer mom, which I haven't even started yet because I just wanted to show you that it's a process that you're going through but the clearer that you can get with this the more ideas so here's what you do you get this filled out you print it up and now you know on monday so each 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 number is a week so like week one week two week three week four five six seven so you have ten weeks and everything is split up by by um number one so uh, on monday number one tuesday number one does that make sense obviously um okay so i really think that the clearer you get, I'm promising you, the clearer you get um, on your brand and being consistent with showing up with your brand. Like, I don't know why, but it was just like an aha moment. I've been doing this, you guys, and I've been doing it for um, two weeks. And I'm telling you, my engagement is through the roof. My engagement is literally through the roof. I get more comments, more like likes, more shares, more of I, I'm so much like you. It, you know, it's crazy and that's what you want. Okay. Um, okay. So just make sure you can also if Pinterest is not working for you. You're not finding your tip. Just make sure you type in tip for whatever your, whatever that thing is. Um, if it, if it's not working for you and Pinterest, just go to Google and say tips for other things will pop up. I had to do that on some of them that will work too. Um, so I just want you to start treating this business like your passion um, and I know this sounds like a weird saying, but it, I heard this today and I was like, oh, that's kind of good. It's kind of weird though. So don't judge me, but I liked it. It like your lover and get excited. <laughs> like treat it like your lover, like that you just love to be around and you can't get enough of, and you just want to learn more about, and you just want to share, like treat it like that, like treat it like a relationship that you are so excited and happy to be around. We don't do that. We aren't having fun in this business. Sometimes we aren't enjoying what we're doing because we're branding 
everything. We're brand, we're trying to brand everything. Like you don't have to talk about every single thing that you see other coaches talking about. Like you don't have to drop F bombs. You don't have to just have stock pictures of Shakeology. You don't have to, you know, do anything other than brand yourself. Um, because the truth is, is people don't care what you know until they they um they know that you care about them and they don't and they don't care unless they feel a connection with you okay and if they don't feel a connection with you you're just going to be another beach body coach that they scroll and i know that you all have those people that you're like oh she's posting again goodbye like you just keep like oh my gosh oh my gosh like that kind of stuff okay so your goal is to start to have scroll stopping posts and here's the thing, these do not have to, this is a very, I want to make a very big uh, point about this. These, these posts should not take hours and thought provoking and like hundreds of like, oh my gosh, like this took me an hour eat for like two or three of these. And then, and then honestly, like it shouldn't take that long. Like you should look at this and be like, oh, okay, this is what I want to do for this. Like take a picture, like. You know, it could be a simple couple sentences and just make sure that you get good lighting in your pictures. You face a window um, and, and you start to be true to who you are. Okay. Um, if you are struggling, I said that before, if you are struggling with figuring out your seven, that's probably why you're struggling because you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, then you can start to, um, you can type in on Google or YouTube. I, I, I checked for you on YouTube. There's a hundred plus videos on branding. I'm not saying watch all hundred. I'm saying if you're struggling, scroll through and look through something that relates to you, that you feel like you can relate to the person. Listen to the first couple minutes. If you like it, take some notes, start to learn a little bit more about branding. Okay. And then the last thing I want to say, and then I'll pass it over to Tanya. I had a half an hour and I think I nailed it. Like I'm um, two minutes to go is graphics graphics. So one part of it is the business part, which is what I just said, like your content. And then the second part I can stop the share. Okay. Um, okay. The second part of this is, uh, graphics. Okay. And this is something that I feel, oh my gosh, am I pausing? Please tell me I'm not pausing. Uh, oh my gosh, my mouth is open. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh you're gosh. all good. Okay. Everyone is like pause. So if you can hear me, then I'll just keep talking. Um, I feel like, um, your brand is ever like changing. So I'm six years into the business. I'm like different than who I was six years ago. So as long as you do this every 10 or so weeks and you constantly are working, like maybe that doesn't fit my brand anymore. Um, maybe I'm evolving into something different or you want to focus on something different. That's okay. Um, so the graphics part of this is, are your logos. Okay. Your logos kind of represent your team. It's your colors. It's like, it shows like custom logos and color palettes and consistency, um, that kind of stuff. You can hire someone to do that, or you can ask a friend that's really good at that, but it is important to start using the same tones and the same colors in your business. So start thinking about that. Like, what are your favorite colors? What are your favorite tones? What are your favorite fonts and be consistent? You may have a certain color, um, type of app that you're using. Um, and I'm talking primarily here for a call to action post about a challenge group, maybe your like page cover photo, maybe just your cover photo, or just when you have some type of, when you're posting something, trying to brand yourself, your challenge groups, your free groups, that kind of stuff, it's the same font, it's the same color, that does make a big difference in your business, okay? So that is a visual clarity, is the second part of your graphics. So, I mean, sorry, gosh, the second part of this, of branding, which I feel like if you get the business type down, your very next step should be to start branding yourself with graphics. You don't have to pay a large amount of money. You can find lots of people that do this for a very reasonable price. And you, um, but I just wanted to share that with you that I do believe that font um, and that kind of stuff is important, but it's not nearly as important as content. If you're showing up with your content and showing up every single day, um, it's going to make a big difference. Okay. So I am done with my tips. I hope that that helped you. Um, I really truly believe that if you put effort into this and you consistently do this and you like, this is, I just shared with you exactly the step-by-step -step system that I've done to rebrand myself in the last two weeks to, to become the coach, not just the coach, but the kind of person I want people to see me as. Okay. Um, 
I was doing this before, but not at this like consistency and I was missing things. I wasn't consistently talking about, for example, being an entrepreneur. I wasn't consistently talking about um, being a stay at home mom, that kind of stuff in this aspect. And now it's really making me um, do a better job with that. Okay. So Tanya is going to talk to you now and she's going to talk to you about really weaving your struggles into your brand. Cause that's a big part of how people relate to you. Okay. Hey guys. Okay. Quick question that somebody had in the chat, Kiana, before I get started was, do you put both your posts on your like page and your personal page? No, I'm only building my business. Uh, I'm trying to focus more on my business page. So, um, that is what I'm, I'm doing. I wouldn't say that I, I build on both, but I build primarily on my business page and I build, I do post more of just like regular life kind of like a lifestyle on my personal page. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I am posting every day on my personal page, but I don't do any like workout posts typically on my work uh, regular page. And I don't do like that kind of stuff, but I highly suggest that if you haven't built your like page, you should be doing this on your personal page. Okay. It's a great tip. So um, guys, make sure that I hope you took notes and you're working on your seven things and you know, I know it can take some time, but it's going to save you time and frustration in the future. And um, one thing I just want to clarify before I get started with the struggles is make sure you, you're you and you, you know, because that's who people are going to connect with and make sure that you're posting at times that you would be on social media like think about your target market like who you're t speaking to when are they online so like most of my people are moms and they're exhausted like i'm going to do my part and i go hit the carpool road like i've got somebody else taking one of my kids right now i'm basically in my car like most evenings driving my three kids around and um, I don't have time to get on Facebook until like, you know, nine or 10 when the kids finally are all home. So think about like what stage you're in. And it was different when my kids were smaller. So um, you really want to think about that when you're doing your post, because it can be different depending on your market and who you're speaking to. Um, all right. So what I want you guys to do is um, think about the struggles that you have. Think about the struggles you had before finding Beachbody. Think about some of the struggles you currently have. Like, for example, when I, um, before I started Beachbody, I was exhausted all the time. Um, I had three young kids. I was feeling with sugar and with um, soda and coffee and not in a good way. Like, the, that was like my diet. And I really wanted, Jessie's laughing because she's the one that saw me. <laughs> I really wanted a change and, um, and I just didn't know how to do it because I was just completely overwhelmed with all of the information that, you know, I could Google it. I could purchase a program. I could go to, I could do all these things, but I was in such a state of overwhelm that I needed something simple and the sugar cravings, you know, and the caffeine were really bad. And so I needed something to help with that. And so a lot of times when I talk, you know, when I talk about struggles, I'll talk about my past, like how I used to be struggling with sugar. And, um, you know, now I don't, it, it was not overnight. Another struggle that I have, um, and I actually just talked about this a few yesterday was I used to think that, um, I have three kids and I used to think that I needed to run myself ragged and sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. And, in order to be considered a good mom. Like I legit, that's what my practice was. I would run myself to the ground um, because I thought it would make me a bad mom if I just took, you know, 30 minutes to exercise. I know that's not true, but that was what I was telling myself. And that was one of my big struggles. And so those are just a couple of examples. Another, you know, struggle is that um, I struggled with fad dieting. Um, whatever your struggles were, or currently are, you want to write those down. And I would suggest coming up with, you know, five to 10 different ones and just kind of write, like, you know, you can come up with a couple it's, um, and just kind of write down like what you were feeling at that time and how Beachbody has been able to help you with that or how Beachbody is helping you with that. Like how is, you know, for me, it was Shakeology was a godsend for me because 
it was better than all that caffeine and sugar that I was, you know, taking in my body every day. And I was running around crazy. I wasn't eating breakfast because I had to get my kids ready. And so Shakeology was great for me. And I, you know, think about those types of things. So um, if you haven't listened to the national wake up call that was on Monday, it was great because she talked about a struggle web. And I thought that was really good because you just, you need to go back and think about what struggles you had before Beachbody, what are you still dealing with? And how is this a solution? Now, when you're talking about it, you don't want to be like beach body, beach body, beach body, because it violates, you know, then you're just another, you know, one of those people that's just posting like white noise up there. I don't know. Like I just looked in my feed and, you know, I'm a big supporter of network marketing. I'm a big supporter of moms and businesses, but I legit had like eight of um, a specific skincare company, same photo eight times like in a row in the same news feed. I don't know. Like why, why do I want to try, try that product? Like all I see is like a stock photo. I'm not going to try it. And it's the same thing with Beachbody. You don't want to just put a picture of Shakeology or a picture of, you know, like the workout program or the trainer up there. Like I've seen a lot of people post up um, Megan Davies, the new clean week with the clean week logo. And I'm like that you should do a photo of you doing the workout or you like a video of you doing the workout and how it's helping you. So you want to talk about how it helps you. So for example, struggle being sugar for me and talk about, I'm really glad, you know, I always talk about, I used to struggle with sugar and fueling with caffeine. I would have like two, um, you know, triple shot espressos each day. I would, you know, I was just eating, um, tons of sugar at night And I wanted to, I, you know, and I had all these cravings and now I don't have any of these cravings anymore. And I'm feeling my body with my daily superfoods that is talking about a struggle and how I've been able to help with it. And I do refer to Shakeology as superfoods in my posts because that creates curiosity. It's not just branding, branding the company. It's branding what I'm doing because my brand is me. People come to me because there's over 400,000 coaches because they relate to me and that's how they relate to me. They don't care, you know, what I'm drinking. They care what I've been through and how it's helping me. People go to Facebook for help. They go to Facebook for hope. You know, people always talk about like, oh, social media is so bad. No, it's not. It, help, it can be used for good. It helps a lot of people if it's used right. But you need to make sure that you're branding yourself because people, when they're scrolling at night and they're exhausted from their day, they're looking for hope and inspiration. And that's what you can be. But you need to do that through your brand. So talk about your struggles, write down your struggles, and then just focus on one at a time. Don't feel like you got to get them all in one post. Otherwise, it's going to be like this long. Like last night, I was writing up a post and I checked it with my one of my success partners. She's like, dang, that's a long, Tanya. And I had to check myself. I had a lot of different struggles going on in there. And no, people just don't have time to like read a long post anymore. They don't have the patience for it. So I shortened it up and talked about, you know, one struggle and how I was able to overcome it and how I want to help them, which leads me into the next part, which is you talk about your story. So you hook them with your story. So your struggle. And um, then you, you know, pose a question like, do you struggle with sugar? Have you ever struggled with sugar? You know, probably. And then you can invite them. You can do a passive invite and say, um, if you are, you know, reach out to me for help or I'd love to help you. Would you like some help? I have a sugar group start a cut the sugar, cut the crap group starting. Sorry. <laughs> um, next week. And so you can put those all in your post and you can do that. And I would suggest like, you don't want to do that for every single post. Otherwise you will come across, you know, it just comes across a little salesy, but I would make sure you're doing that multiple times a week in order for people to connect with you. So, you know, asking, hooking them with a story, a struggle, asking a question, seeing if they struggled with it too. And then third, inviting them. So um, you know, one of mine is, um, I used, I hate mornings. I really do, but I have to get up at 5am because otherwise I will never get a workout in. And it also makes me better prepared to deal with my waking up my children. Like people are like, Oh, I can never be a morning person like you. I'm like, yeah, I had to force myself to do it because if I hit the snooze button, you know, like Kiana's talking about, like, you know, she puts her, I put my phone in my bathroom too, um, to check my, so I don't hit the snooze. If I 
was doing that, I wake up in a really bad mood because I'm unprepared. I'm in a hurry and I'm trying to help my kids and I'm not helping them the best. So I get up at 5 a.m., you know, was not a morning person before. And I talk about that. And just so that I can get myself ready for the day because my morning routine is what helps me with my busy life with being a mom of three and a CEO. And I talk about that a lot. That's actually one of my big things is um, talking about that because it's made a huge impact in my life and my family's life. So make sure that you're telling the story, asking a question. So I'll often say, do you struggle with your morning routine? And then slide in an invite, a passive invite and say, um, would you like some help with that? I'd love to help you. You just keep it really simple. Like you're talking to a friend, you're talking to them in person and, you know, really um, speak from the heart. And that's why you want to use um, your struggles and your stories. And because that's where you're going to connect with people. The pain points that you've had in your life are going to help you with this business. Your mess is your message. Like my mess was that sugar, the overwhelmed mom just had given up on taking care of myself. And now I'm someone that doesn't struggle with sugar, doesn't struggle with caffeine, which is a huge, huge, I mean, accomplishment for me because it was something that plagued me for years. Um, and I, Get, I'm disciplined enough now to get up in the morning. If I talked like that to my followers, they would not be able to relate to me. It took me time to get there. If I was, I had a message from a mom today, uh, last night, and she was like, I just want to thank you for, and I get this a lot, for being so real. It's easy to relate to you because I see you, you know, you've got a crazy life with your kids and how you talked about self-care that like really hit home for me because that's something I haven't been doing for myself. I am, she was talking about how she's a mom of three as well and her life is crazy and she's not taking time for herself and she's run herself into the ground. And she's like, I really appreciate you just keeping it real and showing that it can be, you know, that you have good days and bad days and it can be done. And so that's something that um, you need to, you know, you need to make sure you're relating to people. I see people all the time and I was guilty of this for a while where I thought I had to be perfect. I thought I have to maintain a perfect weight. I have to maintain perfect eating habits and I have to, everything just has to be perfect or no one's going to want to work with me. Nobody wants to work with somebody that's perfect. Like nobody. Cause that it's just, you know, it's defeating. And so a lot of times I'll also, you know, I just, I keep it real. And if people like it, awesome. If they don't connect with me, that's fine. I'm here to help those people that I'm supposed to help. I'm not here to like force people to work with me. And it's never been that way. I've always connected with people through, and it's all been through social media. It wasn't, I have other people in person, but majority of my business has come from social media. I've built my business 99% on social media. And so, and it's through being authentic and sharing struggles. Um, so make sure that you write out your struggles and then, you know, though, I think those are really good ones to post. Like Kiana said, like on Sunday nights or Monday nights are really good too, because Sunday people are dreading going back to work. Like they're like, Oh my gosh, the weekend was awesome. I can't believe I have to go to work tomorrow. I hate work. I hate my life. I hate Monday. Um, and usually Monday night they feel like they got hit by a Mack truck. And they're like, oh, I hate, you know, I got to go work tomorrow. Like life just sucks right now. I mean, can you guys relate to that? Like I felt that way when I worked in corporate America, I was like, dang it, the weekend's already over. So those are really good times that I find to post those big, you know, those big struggles. But I also share them throughout the week. Um, a lot of the people that I are in my target market are stay at home moms that work from home or um, have the ability to get online at work. And so a lot of them do check their Facebook at 9 a.m. So a lot of times I will share that stuff at 9 a.m. because they're sitting at work, like trying to get through the day, um, drinking like their third cup of coffee, haven't had breakfast, and I will start talking to them. And that's why it's important to know who you're speaking to. Um, one thing before I um, open it up for questions is make sure that um, you don't get obsessed with likes. Like some people get obsessed. They're like, oh, I didn't have that many likes. Often the ones that I have the fewest likes on and the fewest comments are the ones that I get the 
best customers and coaches from. Like I'll, I get excited when I um, see one that doesn't have that many likes because I know that I'm reaching my market and I'm not just reaching the masses. Um, and so that's something that I, and I hear coaches all the time. They're like, Oh, it was a crappy post. I only got like 10 likes. I'm like 10 is great. Or I only got like, you know, um, I didn't get that many comments and I'm like, you guys, like, this isn't a popularity contest. Like reach out to those likes you got and say, Hey, um, you know, if somebody likes your post, you should be reaching out to them and saying like, Hey, Kiana, thanks so much for um, liking my post. It's hard to be real sometimes, but you know, that, um, I really appreciate you, but I really feel like it makes a difference and I really appreciate your support. Um, how are you doing? And it's just a great conversation opener. And so make sure that you are not just throwing those away because you didn't get like 50 or 60 or a hundred or 200 likes. Um, because those are the ones that's going to be speaking to your market, your targeted market. Um, if you look at my group of coaches or you look at my group of customers, they're all very similar. They're different, yet they're all kind of the same because it's who I attract. Um, and I typically attract the overwhelmed mom that has um, lots of children and is running chaotic life. Like I was you know, messaging with a couple just a few minutes ago and they're like, I see your husband's out of town. They're challengers and coaches on my team. They're like, I just want to say like, hang in there mama, because I know that carpool's rough. And you know, because they know what's going on in my life. I've had text messages today because I talked about yesterday being, you know, my husband's out of town and like, I need him, love him. Like he's great when he's here. I need him to help me drive children around is basically what I need. I'm like, die in here with it, just me driving because it's not physically possible for me to be in three places at one time. So that's something that, um, you know, I, I kind of shared and, um, was like, it's hard when he's gone and I, you know, and the kids miss him and I miss him and a piece of us is missing. And so, um, other moms resonated with that and they, you know, were messaging me to make it, you know, and I thought that was really cool because I've created a community because I've shared my struggles and I've shared authentically on my Facebook page and my Instagram. Don't forget about Instagram. So you can share these things on there. Um, one thing that I do suggest is if you have a personal and a business page and you're like, gosh, I'm just overwhelmed with the thought of creating content for both. Post on both. Like often I'll share the same content on both. Like unless you've been a coach for a long time, like Jesse, myself, and um, Kiana, like you can um, build, you can share that information on both places. Um, I often share the more personal posts on my personal page, like of my children, um, rather than my business page, like if they, you know, go to a Christmas concert or something. Um, but, um, you know, don't overthink it. Um, I would say, the biggest things to take away from this call is be you, be authentic, um, do your seven things that define you, and then make sure you've got your struggles, and then fail forward. You're going to post stuff, and you're going to be like, oh, that didn't really work out. Learn from it. Um, I look at that as opportunity, not as failure. When something doesn't work out, I'm like, oh, what can I learn from this? How can I change it to make it better? Because I can guarantee you that Kiana and myself, we've both, you know, tried different things that didn't work. We've done posts and they haven't worked out. It's okay. Like, don't stress about it. Don't think you have to be perfect in everything you do. Just get out there and start doing it and make sure that you're sharing from your heart, you're authentic, and that you're not sharing stock photos. Like, please, like, it makes my like skin crawl when I see stock photos and um, because you're a store and it's, it's just white noise and you're not going to, you're not going to relate to anybody and something that you really need to do. And this was something I wasn't, I've told my team, I had like, I wasn't comfortable with sharing selfies of myself and I did not. Um, I had my profile photo when I first started as a coach was of my children and the pictures I had of myself were really old um, because I was, I lacked self-confidence and now I'm like a selfie queen. Um, but <laughs> it's more to like, just, it's part of the business and it's to show people I'm a real person. Like my hair is going, you know, if you look at my video on my business page this morning and my hair is like bouncing, it's like all over the mat. I don't have makeup on when I do my workout videos or anything like that. 
but um, it shows people I'm a real person. Um, and so I know it can be hard to like share that and to share your true authentic self, but think about who, what attracted you to your coach. Think about the coaches that you currently look up to in this business right now and see what, you know, how they're, I'm not saying to compare, but see that they're sharing photos of themselves. They're sharing videos of themselves. Still to this day, doing a live video on Facebook kind of makes me want to vomit, but I do it anyways. Um, you grow outside your comfort zone and I'm getting more comfortable with it. But legitimately when I do a live Facebook page, like a live video on my personal Facebook page, my mouth starts getting dry and I'm like, my stomach gets butterflies, but that's how you know you're doing something right, right? It's like going in for the big game. If you play sports, I tell my son all the time, if you're nervous, it means that you're going to, you know, you really care. So make sure don't, um, just do it. Um, just I laugh, excuse me, because, sorry, I'm laughing because I, I legit did a live video the other day and I was like stuttering and lisping over all my words. I was like, what? And I, in the middle of my video, I just said, okay, I literally cannot talk right now. I'm really nervous for some reason. And everyone started laughing. Like, I feel like if you just lead with your fear, anyhow, sorry, go ahead. It is no, it's, it's true. Like, see, everybody gets nervous. And I remember I had something I wanted to do on Facebook and I felt really called to do it. And um, it was my video on why I gave up fad dieting. And I told Jessie, who's on here, and she goes, don't be a baby. Do the five-second rule. Five, four, three, two, one, and do it. Don't and be a baby. It. Um, and I just needed someone to call me out. She's, you know, she's my coach. We're good friends. Like, it was all good. But now I remember, I'm like, don't be a baby. Just do it. And I do it. And those are the ones that actually get me, like, the interaction I'm looking for and the community that I'm looking for. So definitely that. Did you have something to add, Kiana? I just have two things that I remembered. Are you done, Tanya? I didn't want to cut you off. One oh, quick thing I was going to tell you is um, real quick is make sure that you are doing engagement posts. So doing posts, like I did a post, like, do you like pumpkin spice? Yes or no. And it went gangbusters. Um, I did a post yesterday of my, it was a random photo I did of my daughter running on our street. You can look at my page. It's Tanya Landis. You can look on my personal page. It's right there. And I had her like running on the street and it had the fall colors. And I just said, you know, I talked about fall, how I, I like the pretty, you know, the pretty leaves, but I don't really like the cold. And I said, do you like fall? And the post is like insane right now. Um, and so it's just a simple engagement post, but that's going to help you also drive up some engagement on your page. So I would do, um, a couple of those a week. So, all right, I'm finished. Go ahead, Kiana. I know I piggybacking what you said. I, I like that because they even get to know you better because you posted about fall. So they're like, you know what I mean? Like it, you could also ask questions about, I did something, the same thing on, uh, uh, on TV shows, like what were their favorite TV shows were, but they had to yeah. comment with they had to comment with a gif on someone else's TV show. It was pretty funny. Okay, but here are my last two super quick things. So remember those topics that I gave you? A couple things. Um, on your one through 10, I, I hope it came across that it doesn't matter how you uh, give these tips. Um, you should include some live videos. So in your, ten, in your, in your tips, you should be you, like, for me, for example, like I might share a story about self-love versus posting about it. Does that make sense? And, and just like Tanya said, like, it's not always easy sharing story. It's not always easy getting live, but the more I do it, it's like right ripping off the band-aids, you know what I mean? And it's like, even six years into the business, I'm still doing it because I know it grows my business. And you know, what's funny yesterday, I did a video, my daughter gets the most likes and the love and like all this engagement, like we do cooking videos together. And like, I was like thinking, I got the kids all set up and I was like, okay, what could go wrong? And then I even thought before I went live video, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's the worst that can happen? Okay. They probably just come talk to me all the time. I'll deal with it. Oh, the worst happened. Like my, my, my three-year-old was trying to train my dog in the middle of the video and was like screaming at the puppy. And then my son starts crying because I took his technology time away. And then my daughter's spilling everything. And it like, I got the most positive feedback and it was just so funny because I almost said to myself right now is not a good time to go live but it actually was the opposite it's the best time to go live to show real life does that make sense okay so don't forget to show real life and to share uh, include live videos in 
and that. And then the second, the last thing I want to share is part of your seven, when you're picking part of your seven, it is totally okay to have a, a struggle that Tanya talked about, be part of the seven things. The, it, the only thing that you have to do is you must share your story within that struggle. So let's say like anxiety is something that you're dealing with on a day, like you struggle with anxiety. That's probably part of your story. If you struggle with that every day, do you know what I mean? Like that's part of your story. So maybe that's part of your seven things, but you're giving tips every day. Like you're sharing something that you did that day to help with your anxiety. Does that make sense? Like you're giving a tip. So like if you're, don't ever feel like you can't, you can't share a struggle as part of your brand. Cause I feel like they kind of are one and in, in, intertwined and Tanya did a great job at sharing how you can do that. But just think of your, of your brand and then the things that are the seven most important things in your life, the things that are super important in your life. And honestly, if anxiety or, you know, I was writing out my struggle web when Tanya was sitting right here, she gave me some good ideas, but, um, like I've had um, infertility in the past and multiple miscarriages. That's a big part of who I am. Do you know that's my struggle like to get to where I was? And um, I never believed that home workouts worked. That's part of my like, that's, that's like a, a struggle web. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm chronically hard on myself. That's part of my struggle. Um, I constantly have this idea that I should be balanced. So I need to eat sugar to be balanced. Does that make sense? Because I don't want to be like, so on this way and so i constantly have this thing in my head it's like ridiculous but anyhow anyhow you know what i mean um and i'm like tanya i hate mornings but just remember that um your struggle can be part of your seven i just wanted to clarify that okay and that's all i have for you guys um i was going to tell you guys i'm on my iphone because my phone my computer froze i do believe that it still records because this has happened before um so hopefully i'll get the recording up i just didn't want to mess with the computer so hopefully the recording will be up but Anyhow, I don't know why I told you that, but <laughs> I'm just telling you that hopefully you can share this with people and share this with your coaches and share this with teams. And this brought a lot of value to you. Um, but do us a favor. Tanya and I talk a lot about this. Don't just get off the call and be like, oh, I'll start that next week. Like that'll be something I start next week. Like you have five seconds when you get off the call to start it. Like get off the call and, and start something Put into action something. If your business is struggling, if you are just stuck, if you have been confused, if you don't know what your brand is, now you do, okay? Now you do. Now you have a solid foundation and plan. You just, you just went to the CEO meeting of your freaking life, and now you're going to rock the hell out of the next three months. And I know a lot of people think the last quarter is the hardest, but I promise you, if you do this, the last quarter will be your strongest. If you brand yourself and be proud of who you are and authentically show up and be vulnerable and raw and real, um, I promise you, it's free. It's a free thing when you don't have to pretend to like something that you like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, one of my coaches, Lainey, has a lot of tattoos. And I know that like that's a big part of who she is. And I don't have one tattoo. If I was like, you know, like that to me is like a big part of who she is and she can be proud of that and she can share that and she can like talk about her tattoos and talk about their meanings and be like, look, at listen, this is me. But I don't have to, like, I don't have a tattoo and I'm a tattoo virgin. Like that's not part of my brand. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like sometimes we try to be like other people when in reality, you're just, you're totally fine being yourself. Okay. So that's our tip. That's my tip. Awesome. And we did it in less than an hour, Tanya. We got a lot of information in less than an hour. Okay. So I will get the recording up. I will share the recording with you, Tanya. Some of your team, I think, um, was asking if I could share that document. I am more than happy to share that document. It is so rough draft, though. Um, and just remember that, like, what resonates with me may not resonate with you. So I'm totally fine to share it. But don't use like everything on my sheet to become you because then that would defeat the purpose of this call you're not branding yourself right um but if you're just using it as a guideline absolutely i can share yeah you want because people aren't going to connect they want to connect with you and if you're not being you and then they get you as a coach and then they're like hey what what the heck you know yeah. like i had um i had another coach that on a different team that i did a post and she copied it word for word and even left the mom of three in there and she doesn't have three kids she has two kids and it's like you know it was like seriously don't do stuff like that like you know get 
inspiration and get ideas, but people, they want to work with you for you. Um, you know, like I said, 400,000 coaches, um, you have something to offer your people. And so get out there and be you and they'll connect with you. Like, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't, you know, this is, this is you. Like, what would you tell your, those of you that are parents, if you told your child they're, you know, they're struggling, you know, in social situation or something like that, you would tell them to be themselves, you know, unapologetically be themselves. So I always look at this when I'm struggling with something like that and think, what would I tell my kids? I would tell them to go out there and be themselves and people will either, you know, they'll love them for who they are. And if they don't, that's their problem. Like you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea, like I said. So get out there and do it. And then as we post the um, recording, um, because we are at time and I got to go drive that carpool, um, you can comment um, on the post and like um, we will answer, we will get, you know, if with any questions and we'll get those answered, I promise. Okay. Thank you. Go back to your, go back to your team page and post on the call something that you're going to take action in the next 24 hours. Okay. Oh, something great. that you're, that, that you yeah. learned that you're going to take action in the next 24 hours that you're taught, you're, you're done being, making excuses and you're just going to move forward. Cause I'm excited. I'm excited to see um, how this is going to help mm -hmm. you and how this is going to move forward because we just gave you a $1,500 call in one hour. <laughs> yep. For nothing. <laughs> so do something with it. So okay. Kiana can get her money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. I need to pay it forward to someone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. okay. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>